Beans, what's up? I'm another XYZ. Welcome back to another club banger. Today, we're hanging out in r slash unpopular opinion. This one was one I was like, ah, should I do this subreddit? Should I not? Today, we're gonna be sharing our opinions about this kind of stuff. We're gonna be talking about opinions that are unpopular, and we're just gonna roll right into it. I just wanna know in the comment section below whether or not you agree with the opinion that's read or you don't agree. I'm going to give a brief after each one where I lie on that opinion and we'll go from there. Remember, try to keep it as civil as possible down there, guys. Let's jump right in. Anyone who unironically thinks that large corporations and billionaires care about social justice or even socialism should be given a mental evaluation. If you unironically think that Google, for example, cares about the struggles of women when they change their doodle for a day, or that a billionaire cares about racism because they had some child slaves make shirts that say racism is bad, or even that billionaires support socialism because of an offhand comment by supporting universal basic income, even though they actively sabotage the socialist movement with identity politics, you should be given a mental evaluation for your own safety. You shouldn't lose any civil rights, though. I kind of agree with this one. I always think it's really funny in an ironic sense when companies are like, we care about women in CEO positions, or like, we care about women in executive positions. But the whole company, there's only like one, per one female in an executive position, and they tout it everywhere. They're like, look, we have a female in an executive position. Look at us. We're so, look at how cool we are. When it's like they put them in a token position, it's kind of, it kind of sucks. I think honestly, big giant companies should definitely be paid more attention to with those kind of things. Cause you look at them and you look at the numbers and they're still disproportionately male heavy. I mean, just to be real. I very much appreciate the women's movement and having a women's day is awesome. One thing that bothers me is pop culture and publications of all sorts see women actresses as very powerful figures. I don't see how they are compared to business professionals or even working class mothers. They just act powerful in movies. Ooh, that's a spicy opinion from this person. <laughs> uh, they started out with a hard jab and then afterwards followed up with something that like I kind of agree with. I believe famous actresses are can be, or well, can be portrayed as powerful women because some of those actresses, they come through a lot of adversity and things like that. But then he follows up with the business professionals and working class mothers. And yeah, th that's a lot of power there. Cause I mean, look at the fact that working class mothers weren't even a thing for the longest time there. And I totally give a lot of respect to like business professionals and stuff that are essentially walking into a boys club and shaking up the whole scene. So I get where he's coming from, but I don't agree with him. Quiet people should be allowed to stay quiet. I'm a quiet person. Throughout my life, I've had people tell me to open up, but in reality, I just want to be left alone. How many times must I hear, you are so quiet today, why are you so quiet, etc. Quiet people shouldn't have to speak up if they don't want to. Not everyone is the same, nor should they need to flap their gums to satisfy people. I know most might say they're trying to socialize, but there are other ways to initiate conversation than expecting you to lead the discussion. There's nothing wrong with being quiet, it's just who we are. As somebody who is stereotypically quiet, I can definitely see this, like sometimes I just wanna be left alone. If people are like, oh Travis, why are you so quiet? Oh, are you, are you upset, are you sad, are you angry? And it's just like, no dude, I just have nothing to say. <laughs> Some people just wanna talk about so much dumb stuff. And I get it, I do have friends that I talk to but it's just only when I have something to say. <laughs> if I don't have something to say, then I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna do something else because I there's better uses of my time. At least that's what I believe. Um, also at the same time, I'm kind of 50-50 on it because sometimes quiet people do need to open up because quiet people sometimes get held back by the fact that they don't open up to people. There are people out there that will do the talking for you. <laughs> Using to utilize those people to your advantage, I suppose. Being too cold is better than being too hot. I personally find it much more bearable to be freezing cold than to be soaked in sweat because it's too warm. I effing hate the feeling of being trapped in your sticky clothes while enduring hotness. Whereas being too cold is just like a feeling of pain which you can push down or at least ignore. Another argument for being too cold is that you can always put on more clothes to get warmer but there's only so much that you can put off while you're still hot till you're in one layer of clothes and still too hot. I agree with this one 100%. I'm the kind of person who prefers to be colder. And just like they say, slap them on a, a sweater, a jacket, a blanket, a beanie, a set of earmuffs, all sorts of stuff. You can add more clothes. When you're so hot that you can't wear any, like to the point where you're like pretty much naked and you can't get any more naked than you already are, it's super frustrating. It's kind of like the, uh, would you rather die in a freezer or a desert? Like I would rather die of hypothermia in a freezer than die in a desert. That's just, just my opinion. 
If you ban people just because their comments do not fit the agenda of your sub, you do not get to criticize China for censorship. I think it's amusing to watch some of the mods losing their minds over China's censorship while banning those who do not fit their narratives, just like China. If you want to have a cake and eat it, lols. This one I like kind of agree with and I kind of disagree with. I agree with it in the sense that like you shouldn't overly censor people, but at the same time, if you're running a community, you still kind of have to point things in a certain direction. So if I am running creepy PMs and people are posting like praying mantis stuff in there, it doesn't quite fit the nature of creepy PMs. So I'm gonna like I'm, I'm gonna ban people. I'm gonna kick those people out if they keep repeat offending. Uh, if your comments meet a certain type of if your comments meet a certain type of criteria, then bing bang boom, you're good. But as a moderator, I have the ability to change those kind of things. So I disagree with him in a bit because China, the way their censorship works is it's really blanket censorship as opposed to like pointing out people individually who are bad characters and saying, hey, don't do that stuff. Hey, don't do that stuff. Okay, now that you've done it too many times, you're banned. I, I don't necessarily agree with his position on that. Alcohol culture is just as cringe as weed culture. People always say weed culture is very cringe. You can be open about it, but beer pong and slamming back five shots are seen as normal. Kind of cringe if you ask me. I totally agree with this one. It depends on the weed culture. Some some weed culture people are cool. Like look at Snoop Dogg, he's not cringy. Uh, and if he is cringy, he like embraces it. <laughs> he's miss, he is weed culture. Snoop Dogg is weed culture. Like the good side of weed culture. And then there's those cringy people who like take dabs and like lip sync to terrible trap music. That's the kind of stuff that's cringy. Just like with alcohol culture though. You see a bunch of people getting ish faced, it's like you're making yourself look bad. <laughs> and what's the point of slamming all these shots and like bragging like, oh man, I took... And white people drinking alcohol are the worst because I'm gonna steal this from Dave Chappelle because they always keep a catalog of what they did that night before. They're like, I took a... I took five shots of Jameson. I drank eight beers. I ate a cheeseburger. And then I also, uh, you know, I also did a, did a, did a beer bong with Mike. And it's just like, yeah, it's just as cringy. I totally agree. Game developers should stop mainly focusing on graphics, but on gameplay instead. I can understand if someone wants a graphically beautiful game, but come on. There are too many games and game franchises that the average can't play because of their graphics card, and games and graphics and no gameplay at all. What actually matters about the games is being capable of playing it on most PCs, being fun and looking aesthetic. This is something I can 100% get behind. This is why games by EA are getting so much crap. They're getting they're getting crapped on because it's like they focus a ton on graphics and of course microtransactions, but they're definitely like they dump all their money into graphics. They don't focus on the gameplay and then they throw a bunch of microtransactions in. And that's what we're seeing from AAA studios pretty much everywhere. But all these indie games, I mean the niche exists. Um, there are indie games and indie game developers that are creating these wonderful video games that are gameplay oriented but look like crap. And it's just like where are we going to find the good in between? Where is the common ground on that? But I totally agree, at least with AAA game developers, that yeah, stop focusing on graphics, start thinking about gameplay. Death Row inmates should be allowed to fight to the death in a massive battle royale. If all parties consented, this would solve overcrowding in prisons, the high cost of putting someone to death, and would more than pay for itself through pay-per-view, advertisements, sponsorship. Uh, in fact, any consenting adult should be able to join. <laughs> Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. At first you had me, I was like, Death Row Inmates Battle Royale, D Fortnite. Like, <laughs> what is this, Death Row Fortnite? Exactly, this is Death Row Fortnite. Um, when I saw that in my head, I was like, oh dude, that'd be kind of rad. But then when they, they put at the end, in fact, any consenting adult should be allowed to join, it made me remember that even though people are on Death Row, they're still people. <laughs> I don't know, I, I think that's a huge, completely wasteful, like just completely disregarding human life. I, I don't know, I, I, I can't really say one or the other. I mean, yes, it would be rad to see Death Row Fortnite, but I still don't think that everyone should be allowed to do it. But at the same time, is that is that justified? Should I be able to say something like that? I, I don't know, I don't know, I feel iffy about that one. It shouldn't be considered rude to tell someone they stink. I'm certain that this has been said before on this subreddit, but over the past week, I've had to deal with a large number of people who refuse to keep up with basic hygiene practices. You are creating a displeasure for all the people in your general area that may not have the privilege of keeping away from you. And I see that's extremely selfish. If my eyes are watering and I'm breathing through my mouth to avoid vomiting, you need to be told this is a problem, and the fact I would be seen as an A in this scenario is upsetting. 
this is 100% something that I would get behind. I've never thought it was rude to tell someone that they smell bad. I mean, of course there are ways to go about it. Like you don't go like, I mean, man, you reek a bro. You smell like a butt cheek. Like between friends, that's normal. I, I've definitely told some guy friends like you stank, bro. Put on some friggin' deodorant. But even if your coworkers and stuff, like if they are refusing to deal with basic hygiene, I think the thing that gets me the most, not even, I'm not, I'm not even talking about coworkers. I'm talking about just people that I deal with on a daily basis. How hard is it to brush your teeth? How hard is it? You get given toothbrushes like multiple times in your life and they tell you, hey, brush your friggin' teeth. <laughs> I know that it's a luxury in some places and that dental work can be pretty expensive, but you can avoid all that dental work by buying a $2 toothbrush and $2 worth of toothpaste and brushing your teeth two to three times a day. <laughs> and flossing doesn't take that long anymore. They have those floss picks and water picks and stuff. There's no excuse that people should be rotting from their face holes. So I, I agree to this to an extent. Public school teachers are overpaid, not underpaid. Very unpopular opinion that I've literally received death threats for. Public school teachers in the United States earn a median income of around 56,000 per year. This is far too high. I'm not saying what they do is not noble, important, or difficult. I'm just saying that they are paid too much compared to other professions. Ooh, I don't agree with that one. Because with public school teachers, the thing that isn't accounted for is the fact that they spend so much of their own money on materials for the classroom. So the way that schools work now, the funding for them is so bad that they're not getting new materials. They're not getting new books. They're not getting enough materials for students in general. So a lot of those teachers feel like they have to close the gap by purchasing the materials themselves. And this is even for kids that don't even care about it. Like they're even buying this equipment for children that don't care about their education. You know, like these are, these teachers are super selfless. And I feel like 56k, 50 to 60k a year is a pretty decent amount if they were given the tools to do their job. If they were given all the materials they needed to teach children effectively and, uh, you know, just well <laughs> in general, then 56 to 60k would definitely be good. But they aren't given those tools, and I think that's why I would consider them underpaid. All right, y'all. Well, thank you for joining me in our slash unpopular opinion. Like I said before, if you agree or disagree with any of these, let me know in the comment section below. Also, try and be civil down there, y'all. I know unpopular opinions aren't the safest thing to talk about, but I kind of like to see what people are thinking, you know? Maybe there's something I didn't think about. Maybe there's something that I was wrong about. I'm always down to learn something new. So, that being said, no glove, no love. Peace.